Okay. Hi, everyone. This is the lab demo for the chemical composition of cells lab. Um, and, and what it's going to do is basically going to show you a couple of different tests that you can use to test for the presence of different biomolecules. Okay, so let me start off by sharing my screen again and just showing you where the lab is um, on Moodle. <clears throat> and so Okay, so this is part of module four. Okay, chemical composition of cells is the lab. There is a PDF that you guys are going to want to have with you while I'm doing the lab demo. And you're gonna just be jotting down the results in the tables that are in this PDF. So let me just pull up that PDF first um, to show you. It's coming. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see I have the lab is basically going to be set up back here. So I'll make sure you guys can see. Um, all right, so as I said, chemical composition of cells. Remember to read this background information. I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro with just one PowerPoint slide, but um, you can go ahead and read this background information um, in terms of you know the biomolecules. We've talked about that already in chapter three. Um, the next part of the sort of the background information talks a little bit about controls, right? A positive control versus a negative control. And you'll see that some of the questions in the lab that you're going to be answering ask you about controls. Okay, so again, make sure you read that in terms of when we're doing an experiment, we always need to have controls to compare to. And we always need to have controls so that we know that our experiment worked correctly. Okay, so I'll sort of point that out as I go through. Um, all right. So again, gives you a little bit of background about each type of biomolecule that we'll be testing for. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing tests for proteins, for um, starch, right, carbohydrates, and then also for another type of carbohydrate for glucose or simple sugars, really, okay? So in terms of the test for proteins, it is the burette reagent, all right? So let me, so let me also just show you, so, for each experimental protocol, I'm going to be doing what's outlined here. It's a super simple experimental protocol, okay? Um, what you guys are going to be doing is jotting down those results in the table here. Now, for the assignment for this, you're not just going to be completing this PDF and submitting it, okay? There, I'll show you there in the assignment, there's a Word document that's called mini lab report that essentially you're going to have to just remake these tables in Word. I do the first one for you. Um, and then answer the questions below, just like are here. So your assignment is gonna to be to make a Word document, a mini lab report that has the tables of the results that you're just jotting down here, and then the answers to the questions, but you're writing them in a neat way, okay? You're not just submitting the PDF. So let me again show that to you. So make sure you download this PDF and you have this PDF with you in terms of following along for the experiment and writing down the results. But when it comes time to do the assignment, you're gonna be typing this back up into Word, okay? So don't worry about being neat here. You just wanna get the results jotted down. You can even just write them down on another piece of paper, okay? So you don't have to worry about completing the actual PDF. Um, all right, so let me go just go back and show you what I mean in terms of that, that lab report. So here is the assignment for this, the mini lab report, okay? And so if you click on the assignment, you will see the Word document for that, okay? And let me just open it up just so you can see what I mean. All right, so I've already started it for you. So for the protein test, the test for proteins, the table's already made. It's the same exact table as in the PDF. You just insert a table, make a table in Word so that it looks neat. So this is about sort of um, compiling your data, right? And putting it together in a report that's neat and presentable, okay? And so um, we don't really do formal major lab reports in this course, but we um, start to get familiar with kind of putting that data together, all right? And so all you're doing is completing the tables, remaking the tables, and answering the questions underneath each specific table for each specific test, okay? So like I said, I started it for tests for proteins. Now right underneath this, you're going to have um, the next one, which will be the test for starch. You will make that table and answer those questions and put it into this Word document. That then completed Word document, the completed mini lab report, which has the test for proteins, the test for starch, and also the test for sugars will be in 
um, this mini lab report. Okay, again, the tables, completed tables with the answers to the questions underneath. All right, so let me now um, just go back really quick to the PDF. And then I'll, I'll, like I said, I'm just gonna show you one slide that just sort of introduces it, um, the experiment. And I have that, I, that's also uploaded to Moodle as well. So I don't know why that's doing that. It's really annoying me. Um, anyway, all right, so we go back here. All right, and we go back to uh, where we were in terms of the experiment, right? So, sorry, what is this doing? Right here. Okay, so the PDF is there. Remember, that's what I'm gonna be following and that's what you should have in front of you, okay? Either electronically or whatever, but you're just gonna be jotting down the results, right? Um, so I'll, I'll probably share that again when I'm showing, well, probably not, actually it won't because then the screen will be too small. So make sure you have that PDF in front of you, right? Again, let me just go back to it so we're all clear on what we need to do while I'm doing the demo. Okay, remember your assignment is that mini lab report, not just simply completing the demo. Okay, so for the test for proteins, that first test is called the Burette reagent, um, or what you're gonna use, and essentially we're always looking for a color change here, okay? So again, you're just gonna be jotting down the answers in the table, um, or completing the table in terms of the results, right? And then answering the questions below. Again, for starch, it's the same thing, right? Complete the table based on our experiment, complete the questions below. And finally, for tests for sugars, right? Again, complete the table and answer the questions below. All right, so again, let me go back just to that introductory slide that I mentioned, just so you know what, so that's here in Moodle right underneath. And really, like I said, it's really just one slide and it's completely based on that PDF. So just reading the background information in the PDF, you're gonna get the same thing as um, you know, the information that's on this slide, but let me just go over it quickly. In terms of the biomolecules, we know what the four classes are, okay? I have, um, and actually we're not gonna be testing for lipids. I have nucleic acids gr um, grayed out because we're not gonna be testing for them either. So really we're just testing for proteins and carbohydrates, but two different types of carbohydrates, right? So just a reminder, and this is some stuff that's in the background information. This is from chapter three, okay? Dehydration reactions will form biomolecules. Hydrolysis reactions will break them down. All right, so as I said, we will use chemicals to detect the presence of these biomolecules, okay? We're always looking for a color change. So if there's a color change, that indicates a positive test, right? That means the biomolecule is present, okay? If there is no color molecule is not present, okay? And again, remember, I drew your attention to a positive versus a negative control. So for instance, if you were testing, you know, something that you didn't know, an unknown, right? Um, and you didn't know what was in there, you, and you wanted to see if sugar was in there. Well, you, pro you might have another tube that was your positive control, right, that you knew had glucose in it, okay? And so therefore, you knew that this would be, give you a positive test, and then you're going to look at your experimental tube to see what happens. Does it match that positive control? And then on the flip side, you probably would have a negative control that might just have water in it, so that you can compare your experimental tube to those two different controls. Okay, so important to have both a positive and a negative. So say your positive control, um, you didn't see a color change, right? That would indicate there's something wrong with the experiment, okay? So then you might have to repeat it or figure out what's wrong. So that's why controls are super important. Um, all right, so like I said, the first one we'll do test for proteins, okay? Remember, proteins are made up of amino acids. Um, the Burette reagent is the reagent we're gonna use. And, you know, I'm completing these ex experimental procedures. So these page numbers correspond to that PDF. And then, like I said, for carbohydrates, we will do a test for starch and a test for sugar. We will not be testing for lipids. So your mini lab report only is composed of the test for proteins, test for starch, and test for um, sugars. All right. So let's get going with this. So I'm going to stop my share and I'm just going to show... Um, myself doing the actual experiment. Remember, we're following along in that PDF, and basically the first test for proteins is on page 31 of that PDF, okay? So let's start there. All right, so let me stop my share. And 
open this up a little bit more and hope hopefully we can see I'll kind of pull everything up to the screen as I do it. All right, so if you look at page 31 in the experimental procedure, basically I oh, let me get my gloves on. So I'll put my gloves on. I have them all ready to go, right? Um, so the experimental procedure is very simple and it's right on page 31 there. You need four test tubes labeled one through four and I have them for test tubes labeled one through four. Um, I am going to add distilled water to tube one. I'm gonna have albumin to tube two, which is a large protein, a blood protein. Um, pepsin, which is an enzyme to tube three, also a protein. Um, and then starch to tube four, okay? And then we're gonna note what the color change is. So I'm gonna be adding burette reagent in after I add those, um, each of those solutions, right? I'll add the burette reagent and we're gonna look to see if there's a color change. And if you look at the top on that table 3.1, um, the burette reagent, well, just to show you, um, will start off blue, okay? But in the presence of protein, it will turn purple. If we're talking about a smaller protein or a peptide, it will sort of be pinkish purple. So you can kind of, um, depending on the color, there's sort of a graded response a little bit with the burette test, but really we wanna just say, is it positive or is it negative, right? Does it contain a proteins? or peptides or does it not, okay? So here's our burette reagent, it's blue to start, and I'm gonna fill those test tubes. So I'm putting about one milliliter of each of these um, in. So first one is water. And, and if the volume's off a little bit, it doesn't really matter that much. Second one is, so second tube, right, I'm adding to is albumin. So I'm gonna add about a mil of albumin. Third one is pepsin. Okay, did that. And then the last one is going to be starch. Kind of mix that, that doesn't really stay. It's more like a suspension rather than a, um... okay, so I'm adding the starch solution to tube four. All right, so I'm going to now add that burette reagent into each one, and I'll show you the color before and the color, um, so again, the color before, sorry, is blue, okay? So now it's asking you in the table just to fill out what the final color is. All right, so we just need to add five drops of burette reagent into each one. Three, four, five, I should really be doing this under the hood. Okay, so same thing, one, two, three, Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the last one there. All right. So if we look at tube number one, right? Tube number one was water. We can see that it still looks light blue. So the final color is light blue and you will determine whether that's negative or positive. Remember the burette started off as blue. We're looking for a purple color if there are proteins in it, okay? Now, if we look at number two, right? Which was albumin. We can see that it is purple, right? And so what does that mean? That means it contains protein, okay? If we look at tube three, which was pepsin, also purple, right? Why? Pepsin is a protein. Like I said, it's an enzyme, it's a protein. Okay, so that's tube number three. And then if we look at tube four, which is starch, okay? It's kind of cloudy-ish. Remember I told you it's sort of like a starch suspension. It's blue. It is not purple. Therefore, we would call this a negative test, okay? So again, you're gonna answer those questions below. I'm not gonna tell you those answers. You should be able to answer those questions um, based on what I told you. All right, so we're moving on now into to the next experiment. So I'm just gonna slide these off to the side and then we're gonna pull up a new set of test tubes. All right, so I have a new set of test tubes there. Um, right, so again, I just have it all set up so that I have them labeled one, two, three, and four, actually to five. So now we're on the next experiment, right? Which is test for starch. So we're on page 33 of that PDF now, okay? So test for starch. Um, we need to label five test tubes, I already did that. And basically, we're going to add one mil of each of the solutions that's shown here. Okay, so tube one is water. Um, so I'll add all those solutions right now. 
close this up so that it comes up by mistake. One is water, two is starch. Okay, and then I'm also adding the, the potato to two, four, and then um, two, three is onion juice, right? And two, five is glucose. All right, so now we're testing for starch. And so what do we use to test for starch? It's an iodine solution. So in the presence of starch, the iodine solution, um, let me just show you what the color is to start. Um, it's sort of a sort of amber color to start, okay? So in the presence of starch, it will turn blue black. And you can actually see that in that picture on page 33 as well. All right. So let's go, we're gonna add how many drops? About five drops into all the tubes at the same time and we're gonna see what happens, okay? And I'll show you each tube. One, two, three, four. Okay, so all right. All right, so if we look at tube one, this is tube one. Remember this contained water. It's final color, it's still amber. So what does that mean? That's a negative starch test, okay? So again, in your conclusion, you're writing either positive or negative. All right, if we look at tube two, okay? So here's our, here's our tube one, which was negative, right? It was water, we would expect it to be negative. That's our negative control. And here's our tube two, which is starch, which yes, we would expect it to be positive, right? Because it's starch and it's a test for starch. You can see this blue, dark blue, black color. All right. Now, if we look, for not, if we look at number three, which was onion juice, maybe we're not sure what this one's going to be, right? This is kind of like an experimental tube. We don't know. Okay. But again, it's amber. So we call that negative. What does that mean? This onion juice does not contain starch. Okay. All right. If we go on to number four, Number four was potato juice, blue, black. It is positive, okay? Again, an experimental tube, right? Not a control. All right, and if we go to the last one, which is glucose solution, it's really dextrose solution, okay? With simple sugar, we can see that it is also amber color. It is negative. That's what we would expect, right? It's not starch, it's glucose. Um, all right, and I do believe I guess it doesn't really ask you about the negative and positive controls, but I kind of pointed those out. Um, okay, in the next test for sugars, it will kind of ask you about negative and positive controls. So I was sort of pointing that out in this experiment as well. All right, so hopefully we got that, right? All right, so we move on. We're on to that next experiment. These are super quick, right? So make sure we're answering those questions underneath. Remember, you're retyping up making a new table and typing up these questions and putting them into your mini lab report to submit. All right, now, again, there is some, you know, background information that you can read a little bit more about um, on page 34 under test for sugars. We're using something called the Benedict's reagent. The only thing about this one is that it's not an instantaneous result. You actually have to boil the tube for a little while um, to actually get the result, okay? Um, all right, and so it tells you a little bit about the reaction, right? In this reaction, copper ion in the Benedict's reagent reacts with part of the sugar molecule that causes that color change. And if you look on the top and you look at page 35, this is where the, the procedure is. And also at the top, there's a nice picture there that shows you um, the different colors that you'll, you would get. So a Benedict's reagent is also blue to start. And so I'll show you I'll show you it in the beaker here, right? So this is Benedict's reagent. This is blue to start. Meaning if your tube looks blue like this, just like it looks like in the no sugar um, tube on the top of page 35, that means no sugar, it's negative, right? However, if you see color change um, ranging from like green to yellow to red, it indicates the presence of sugar and it's sort of a graded response, right? So green, very low yellow high, and then if it's red, it's very high in terms of the sugar content. All right, so let's get going. I already have a water bath going. 
Um, and I'm going to add all everything that I need to add to these tubes. Okay, so one is water, two glucose, then we have starch, onion, and potato juice. All right, so that's all outlined in that table. Okay, so let me add. We have water, tube one. Glucose, or like I said, it's really dextrose solution in tube two. Okay. Oops, sorry. In tube two. And then we have starch in tube three. So why didn't I move this out of the way? Let me move these guys out of the way. Okay, so I already did tube one. I already did tubes one and two. And now I'm on to three, four, and five. So tube three is starch. Okay, tube three starch. And then we have onion juice in tube four. And we have potato juice in tube five. All right. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna then add five drops, right, of Benedict's reagent to those tubes. Okay, so we have, I have all my tubes here again, and I'm gonna add the five drops of Benedict's reagent and then I'm gonna boil them, okay? And so a few minutes, we're gonna see a color change. I'll pull my computer over by the water bath to do that. So let me now add in the Benedict's reagent to each one. So five drops, yes. One got a little more than it, than it should have. All right, so just so you guys can see how these all start off. Okay, so tube one, two, three, four, five. Okay, blue, right? Blue. Um, the potato and the starch is sort of cloudy. Um, remember that. Four and five. All of them are blue to start. Now let's go put them in the water bath and let's see what happens to the color. Okay, so we are now over here. Hopefully my computer doesn't fall off here. Uh, my water bath is right here. Okay, and I'm going to add all these tubes in all at the same time. And we're going to check to see what happens after a few minutes. So it's real time. Let me go get my lab manual. Right, so real time. So honestly, it usually only just takes a couple minutes. It kind of just says a few minutes. If we were doing this in lab, I'd probably say, yeah, leave it in there for five minutes maybe, maybe not even two minutes, right? And we're gonna look to see which ones change color. So again, remember, if we look at table 3.6 there on page 35, um, the contents, right? Tube one is water, tube two glucose, three starch, four onion, and five potato juice. The, the questions on the, um, that pertain to this test do ask you about negative and positive controls, right? So it says which tube served as the negative and which tube served as the positive control, right? We're testing for sugars. Probably the glucose tube is our positive control. Probably the water is the negative control, right? And then the other ones we're not sure about, okay? And so I sort of gave you the, ans the answer there. Um, there's some other questions that ask about um, the onion and the potato and whether, um, glucose is for, uh, stored as starch or not. And so you're gonna answer those based on the results of our experiment, okay? All right, so I think again, this is pretty straightforward guys. We already got a major color change. I'm gonna let it go maybe another 30 seconds or so. And then that's it, I'm gonna pull them out and we're gonna note the color change. By the way, if you're pulling you know, tubes out of a boiling water bath, um, usually it's a good idea to use a test tube clamp um, however, I'm not going to do that because I can't find one and actually those test tube clamps are a little dangerous. So if anything, it's good to have a hot glove or something like that on there, but I'm going to carefully grab from the top and place them into the rack. All right. So it's kind of one of those things that's probably not proper, um, safety technique. So I'll just put that out there. All right, guys, we got, I, like I said, I am going to let it go another 30 seconds and that's it and we're going to be gone.
All right, so again, remember, if you have any questions about this, please bring them up at our class meeting so that I can answer them. But again, I think this, this lab is pretty straightforward. It's kind of fun to do. So it's kind of a shame that you guys didn't get to do it. All right, so let's pull them out one at a time, I guess, here. Ah, I'll pull them all out at, at, at once. And then I'll show you guys them, just so that I don't. I'm also gonna shut this off um, and unplug it. That is good um, proper lab safety technique. We don't want to burn the building down. That's not good. All right, what did I do here? That's four and that's five. Okay, so this, um, I'm going to also pull that off of there, but this is unplugged. Let's make sure this is unplugged. It is. All right, so let's look at our results here, right? So if we look at tube one, right? Here's tube one. Here's the color. Note the color. It is light blue. Indicate what that means in your table. Is that positive or is that negative? All right, now for tube two, which contains glucose solution, like I said, it's really dextrose solution, tube two. Certainly different than tube one, which was our negative control, right? Um, and this is what our Benedict solution started out as, so we certainly had a color change. Again, indicate whether that means it's positive for sugars or negative. Um, all right, if we look at tube three, tube three was, I believe, yes, our starch solution, okay? Note the color and what that means, positive or negative. If we look at tube four, okay, note the color, is that positive or negative? And then the last one, finally, tube five, which is our, oh, sorry, what was tube four? Yeah, tube four, sorry, was onion, right? So tube four was onion. Again, note the color, whether it's positive or negative. If we look at tube five, which was um, potato, I believe. Double check that, right? Tube five is potato. Note the color, whether it's positive or negative. All right, guys, and so that concludes our chemical of comp chem the chemical composition of cells lab. Um, and again, remember, you are not simply just submitting that PDF completed PDF, you are completing or sort of finishing that mini lab report that I started for you for all three of these tests. So you should have three data tables, three separate data tables in that mini lab report and three separate sets of questions underneath the, that da each data table. Okay, well, sorry, one set of questions under each data table. So three data tables, three sets of questions. All right, guys, thanks.